I'd like to spend a moment or two and introduce you to the seventh in our series of harmonic mechanisms for the mind. What I've just played here is the seed for an entire row of things that we could play. We're going to be looking at in each instance at a tenth. If you're unfamiliar with what a tenth is, if we start from any given note, again we're going to be in the key of no sharps, no flats here, as we are for all of these in this series. If we start on C and count up scale steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just straight up the major scale, that's the interval of a tenth. Now a tenth is a compound third. Here's a third, C, D, E, C, E. So sometimes having thirds right next to each other on the guitar this way, the tuning and intonation can get a little problematic. So if we displace this E up an octave, we're gonna get our tenth now. So it's a little easier to invoke that major third sound without the tuning getting problematic. And the bass in each of these cases is going to go down a third and up a third. So we're going to have C and E. The bass is going to go down to A and A is going to get its tenth. Here's five and five on string six and three. So three and five, five and five, three and five, and now the third above C, which is E, with a G on top, second and third fret. So we're going to have this little composite. And this is nothing to play fast. We want to be looking at this and recognizing these intervals in our mind, and also becoming accustomed to the shapes they take. So this is a major third, oh sorry, a major tenth, with the root on the fifth string. This is a minor tenth with the root on the sixth string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And here's a minor tenth on the fourth string root. So now as we go up, maybe we could think about it before we do it. If we had So our next tenth up from C, if we move up linearly through the scale, we're going to have C and E are going to become D and F. I hope that makes sense. So if we move everybody up, D and F. So now we have a minor chord or a, a minor tenth here on the fifth string. This was the shape for a major tenth, minor tenth here at the fifth and sixth frets and again we get to stay in the scale we get the same minor tenth from B so the bass is dropping a third and it's getting it its attendant tenth it's not easy to say attendant tenth seven and seven B and D and now we need the third above with its tenth, F and A. You see that A is already bothering me a little bit. A little sharp. So whenever you're sharp, I think I've talked about this before, whenever you're sharp, pull on the string before you're inclined to use the peg. Try to bring it down by pulling it. So here's five and six, seven, seven, five and six, three and five. D and F, B and D, D and F, F and A. Now if we move everybody up, D and F become E and G. Now things are gonna look a little different though because we're here, E and G, seven and eight. And our 10th here, down a third is C. Now we have the offset look of a major tenth from the sixth string. Previously we've only had 
this straight across form. Now we're getting this offset form. Nylon strings are pesky. Seven, eight, eight, nine, C and E, E and G. I wonder if you can feel the next one. Up a third. So our bass is always kind of looking. It's a little chord scale. Now with that, I should be able to leave you with it and you should be able to go through and find all the rest, uh, either with using your ears or more to my hope, you would use it knowing the notes on the board and just looking at uh, well, if you can see the key of no sharps, no flats on the board, that's the goal of these things. So what did we have? C and E, D and F, E and G. Now F and A, 8 and 10, 10 and 10, 8 and 10, 7 and 8, I hope you're getting the hang of it, 10 and 12, G and B, E and G. 12 and 12, 10 and 12, B and D is 9 and 10 frets. We'll do a couple more. A and C, 12 and 13, F and A, 13, 14, 12, 13, 10, 12. And if you want to go way up, 14, 15, 13, 15, 16, sorry, 15, 16, 14, 15, and D and F, 12 and 13. It sounds all the world like a C major chord is going to happen. So we get this. That sound sounds like G7 to my ear. powerful interval, particularly if you want to improvise in a contrapuntal style. I've gone on too long. I'm trying to keep these short, so I hope this is of interest to you. You find something in it, maybe make some connections or have a light bulb or two go off. That's always my hope. And I'd like to wish you, as always, a very, very good day.